Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 28 foot by 20 foot concrete slab for a garage. Now this is part two of a three part series. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll have that link show up here on the top. You can click over to that. And that was, that was showing you how we formed and set up this slab in less than an hour. And part three will be about power trialing the slab. That you'll be able to see click over on that video at the end of this video so right now if, hey if you guys don't know me if this is your first time watching my name is Mike Day I own Day's Concrete Floors we specialize in all kinds of concrete flat work uh, stamp concrete slabs floors power troweling uh, concrete repair we even do a lot of epoxy floors and stuff like that so if you like concrete if you love concrete then go ahead down there and hit subscribe and if, you, and if you find value in this video, go ahead down there and smash the like button for me. That just helps me out with YouTube's algorithm and it helps get this video out to a lot more people. So what we're doing is we're, we're pouring the concrete out of the truck. It's a 3000 PSI concrete. We got fiber mesh in the concrete for reinforcement. And as you can see, we got wire mesh in there too. We got what's called slab bolsters under the wire that help hold it up off the dirt so we don't have to pull it up as we go. Um, and then we're also gonna put a double or rebar around the edge. And you can see Darren back there, he's, oh, he's checking the board for straightness right now, but um, we wet set rebar when we pour slabs like this, so we'll set the rebar in after the concrete's done. But right now, we're, this is about a 12 yard slab, so this first truck's got six yards on it, and it didn't take very long to, to empty him, so. There you can see Luke setting that rebar in. We'll put two rows in and we'll sink it down in about two and a half to three inches from the top. Um, we got 90, 90 elbows bent for the corners. So we'll use them for the corners to help strengthen the corner up a little bit. But we just, we like setting the rebar in by hand like this afterwards because that way we know that it's it's pretty close to the top a um, couple inches three inches down is kind of where you want it you don't want it down on the bottom where it's not doing anything and here comes our second truck this is a six inch thick concrete slab and the edges are 12 inches thick so we call this uh, up here in Maine where I live we call it a monolithic slab what do you guys call these where you're from let me know down in the comments and also let me know what you guys use for reinforcement too. Do you use wire, do you use rebar, or do you use just fiber mesh? Um, or do you just use like a matter rebar? What do you guys do in, you know, in different parts of the country? That would be interesting to know. You can see we're helping the driver put his chutes on. Most of the drivers we have are really good guys. They're really good drivers. So we always go grab the chutes for them and, and stick them on. It just, it helps speed things up too so he can mix the load up. We usually tell the driver a six inch slump and that's with a, a water reducer too in the mix. So the water reducer helps us pour a little bit looser slump without having to add very much water at all. It just makes the concrete more workable, easier to work with. Now what I'm doing is I'm double checking my grades, my height. This slab is perfectly level. Um, this, the owner didn't want any pitch to the slab. He just wanted it level. He's going to have two garage doors on the front and a, and a side door or a pass door on the side, the right hand side. So I'm just double checking, make sure everything's perfect and nothing moved. I think you'll find that I'm going to tap that right hand corner down just about a sixteenth of an inch. Definitely want to make sure the front isn't higher than the back when you're setting everything level. I generally like to set that front board just a, about an eighth of an inch lower than everything else, even when the homeowner asks for it level. You definitely don't want it high. You don't want water running back in the garage. So we're gonna dump quite a bit of this second truck out before we start screeding. Um, we just we like to have a quite a bit of mud down before we start screeding. It's just for us, you know, as experienced as we are, we've all been doing this. I've been doing it 40 years. Um, those two guys helping me, my two helpers, my employees, they've been doing it, you know, 20 each. So 
both those guys are really experienced so you know dumping most of the slab out before we screed it is generally the way we do it it's just quicker faster easier for us so i'm holding the chute dumping the concrete darren's got the, co the come along in his hand kind of kind of raking it out and luke i think luke spotted one of the forms started to bow out just a little bit even with all those braces we got on it so he's going to just fix that and you'll see he's going to come back with like a a big metal bar for use for some leverage and there he's got it right there and just push the form back in and rebrace it that happens you know every once in a while it happens with these big slabs like this there's a lot of pressure pushing those boards out hey you know down in the description guys i have a if you guys want to learn how to do this if you're thinking of doing your own slab or if you're thinking of getting into the concrete business and you want to learn how to do this i've got a course down there that teaches you all about how to install concrete slabs from the forming to the pouring to the power troweling everything you need to know it's all broken down into a bunch of videos and it's right down there in the description you can click on that and check that out and uh, I think it would be really worth it's a really good investment for you if you want to learn how to do this and make money doing concrete so you can get that right down in the description guys so as you can see we got about you know 90% of this poured out we're gonna leave a little bit open on the end just in case we're a little high in there but Darren's pretty good at raking it around he's gonna get it pretty close and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the the grade stick there with a receiver on it from the laser and I'm gonna make a wet pad right in the middle of this thing we have a 14 foot screed so this thing's 28 feet across so all we're going to need is one wet pad right in the middle of this, and that's it. And I'm going to mag float that pad, you know, maybe two feet by two feet or two and a half by two and a half feet around. And that's going to be what we strike off from to get our wet pad in the middle of this thing. You can see Luke's going around, setting the rebar around the edge. Darren's over there on the left. He's magging the edges smooth with his mag float. I got all these tools down in the description too, guys. If you know, if, if you guys are thinking about doing this and you, you want to know where to get these tools, they're all down there. You can you can click on them and check them out. We're getting the last pieces of rebar in there. We always mag float our edges smooth first before we screed. It's just the way we've been taught and the way we do it. So that's the way we're comfortable doing things. It just helps push the rocks down, brings up the cream, really smooths the edges out uh, before you screed. It gets rid of all any of the voids by the aggregate. I just think it makes for a lot better job in the long run. We also, we're going to just kick screed this, this slab. It's not very big, so, you know, we've got, a, we've got the Shockwave uh, Vibra Screed from Marshalltown that we use a lot. But this slab's really not that big, so we decided just to kick screed it. You know, for you guys that don't know how to screed like us, I would highly recommend that Shockwave Viber Screed from Marshalltown. I got some other videos about it. If you if you check them out, you'll see how easy it is to screed concrete with that thing. I have I, I have a link down in the description for that too if you want to look at it. So as you can see, we're going off that middle wet pad and then the other guy's going off the top of the board. And we call this, this is how we kick screed. So the guy on the left is kind of kicking his footprints as he screeds without having to stop. And the other guy's just screeding off the top of the board. I mean, that's easy enough. But it's the kick screeding part that is a little tricky at first. It takes just a little bit to learn how to do that and get it right without without digging in with a straight edge or leaving a hump with a straight edge you know we're scoring the end of that straight edge is leaving a tiny little line in the concrete and that's how we know that the concrete is perfectly level when we screed or as level as you can get it I guess nothing's perfectly level but we're pretty darn level when we're done with these things you can see we got it a little bit low so I had to pull a little bit in It's also nice when you set your forms to grade too. I mean, sometimes 
Sometimes we can't because the the sub level is so out of level that we have to just set the forms down and snap a line inside them to pour the slab. But most of the time we try to get the tops right to grade if we can. This makes the whole pour go that much easier. It, it makes it easier for those guys screeding if you got a good raker too. <laughs> That's me raking. I've been, I'm doing my best to try to keep up with those guys. Those guys are pretty fast sometimes. You can see we got it a little bit low in there, so I'm having to push a bunch up. That come along makes it easy to puddle with, though. That's that's the way to go when you're raking concrete. Those Marshalltown come alongs, they're aluminum, so they're really lightweight. And you can move a lot of concrete with them. I'm going to have to dump some more out of the truck here in a second, but I'm trying to just finish this bay out before we dump any more. You can see how Darren's kick tree in there. He's pretty fast. The only time he's got to stop is because of me. I don't have enough concrete up there. So this is, like I said, this is a 12-yard slab. It's 28 foot by 20. It's a level slab, and... The homeowner's just going to build it himself, but he didn't want to do the concrete himself, so it actually, this is actually in the same town I live in, which is kind of rare for us. A lot of times, you know, it, well, I live in a pretty small town, so there's not a lot of building going on anyway, but it's nothing for us to have to travel an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours to wherever our job is. An hour is pretty, pretty normal for us. Yeah, we're just finishing that off. And then we're going to get it bowl floated. And then we got to wait for it to dry up before we can start power trialing it. So Darren's running the bowl float. You can see I like that bowl float. That has rounded edges on it and it barely leaves a line when you push that bowl float and pull it back. They make bowl floats with uh, square edges too, but those leave deeper lines. The only reason we like the rounded ones that doesn't leave a line is when you get on it with a power trial you know if you got deep lines in there and the top of the surface is getting kind of hard on you they're just harder to float out with the power trial if you don't have any lines in there then it just makes finishing it a little bit easier that's the bull float too where you just spin the handle and it tips the bull float one way you spin the handle the other way and it tips it the other way so it makes it easy to bull float this slab's going to get some ankle bolts in it too we're going to show you we're going to be wet setting those ankle bolts here in a second so stay tuned for that and we'll show you how we put the ankle bolts in concrete driver always lets us use his hose to wash our tools down with a lot of times they'll wash the tools for us But all in all, like this, we poured, we formed this slab. At, we started at six in the morning, got the slab formed. Took us about 45 minutes to form it. Concrete showed up at seven. Took us about, oh, I don't know, 30, 35 minutes to pour this thing. And then, as you'll see in uh, part three of the video, when we power trial it, uh, these guys were all done trialing, power trialing this thing, and sawed it by by about noon time, 12:30. So it was about. 65 70 degrees here when we started and it got up to about 75 to 80 today so it was it was a pretty warm day here so what luke's doing now is he's getting the anchor bolts out we got the doorways all measured out so we know where the doors are going so we won't put an anchor bolt with the doors those are six inch anchor bolts too by six inch by half inch so he's going to set them down and leave about an inch and a half to two inches sticking up out of the concrete. And you can see if you get those anchor bolts in at the right time, they set in there really easy. And I mean, no, the homeowner didn't lay out the walls for us, so we're just setting them in. If uh, you know, if we get one in where a stud goes, then they'll just cut it off with a sawzall. So. We just stick them in about every four feet. Because we don't know where they're going to start. 
their walls and where the studs are going to be so it's just best just to put them in every so often and then if one gets in the way they just cut it off but that's how you pour a concrete slab guys I mean get the concrete down you know have your laser there so you can set a pad in the middle you can have a wet pad like we do or you can set some type of some type of form to go off from uh, either a, a pipe screed or a 2 by 4 screed to go off from in the middle if you have to uh, we, we just we've never done that we weren't taught that way but you can see we just wet screed everything use the top of the form on the outside and get it leveled and then run the bow float across so that's how we pour a concrete slab and stay tuned for part three where I'm going to show you how we power trial this so you can learn how to power trial if you want to do that and get a nice smooth finish. Thanks guys.